let's see, Ty Cobb, Joe DiMaggio, Babe Ruth, Ron Santo, Red Faber, Mule Suttles, Ozzy Smith, and the Marlin, 795. What do they all have in common? Right, Hall of Famers. Hey guys, this is Nut and Fancy, and you are looking at a 22 Hall of Fame rifle, the outstanding Marlin 795. What does it take here in the Nut and Fancy project to be declared a Hall of Famer? Pretty much knocking all of this stuff out of the park, at least as I see it, and more importantly, as I test and review it and the 795 was hitting on all cylinders in its review in 2011 here in TMP. You can see it in the upper right if you're in a computer environment. Go check it out. In detail is all the awesomeness that is the Marlin 795. But as a quick recap, by the way, I'm working a big cold tonight. Sorry if I sound, I don't know, stopped up. As a recap, it goes something like this. One, it is extremely lightweight. Oh, I love light things. You know it, love it, and yet, look at that heavy barrel on the 795. Huge win. And that barrel gives this gun, and also its stable mates, the 60, the Marlin 60, the 70 PSS, and other Marlins that utilize the same type of quality barrels, extreme accuracy. As I showed in that review, I'll show some here in this video as well. What an accurate rifle the 795 is. Also, it ain't going to cost you an arm and a leg. About $100. In fact, I've heard of TMPers buying their 795s for under $100, like around $90, depending on where they went to get it um, and how, uh, what kind of sale was going on at the time. And then, if you use the 10 round Marlin magazines, which by the way are outstanding, 100% reliable. Okay, near 100% reliability. There you go, that's a recap of the awesomeness of your Marlin 795. Highly recommended, even to this day when I run into you guys in person, they say, hey, I'm looking for a rifle. This is at the top of my list, along with the Ruger 1022 and some others, Remington 597, it's in there. And yet the question begs, and that's the point of this video, is there a way you can improve your 795? Huh. Let's take a look. Ergonomics are pretty good. Eh, there is one thing I'll talk about here in a second. I would say maybe three categories could be improved. One, I can't do much about, and I don't think you can either, and that is the lack of a reliable higher capacity magazine. I tried those Shooter Ridge magazines. They sucked. Sorry. Hopefully they'll get better. They're all plastic. They fell apart of me during shooting. And as far as I know, last time I checked, there is not a reliable and durable high quality magazine for the 795 yet or the Papoose for that matter. We're still waiting. How about the sights? Well I would say the sights are actually pretty decent on the 795 and yet they can be improved and were improved on this TMP test bed and that's what you're looking at is the TMP 795. Those are the awesome tech sights. Love those. Precise accuracy out of irons or lightweight, they increase the sighting radius, easy to install. There's the front. Again, this is kind of a recap. Okay, so that takes care of the sights. Not much we can do about the magazine. How about the trigger? Huh, you guys prob probably already noticed there's something different about this 795. Welcome to a very short tabletop review of the DI Products 795 trigger. Excellent. First and foremost, this is what comes stock on your 795. It's a polymer trigger guard. And I think I said in my review, I don't really mind it. I'm talking about the polymer. Uh, there's a lot of guns that use polymer trigger guards. Not a big deal with me. However, if I could improve the trigger pull on the 795 and then perhaps upgrade to a higher end trigger guard at the same time, I'm interested. It's kind of interesting and I forget if I address this or not in the tabletop, that the 795, unlike the Ruger 1022, is not a modular trigger group. It actually comes in two assemblies. One you're looking at right here, this is the trigger group. And then you have a hammer and sear assembly. I'll roll a picture in right now. That's the second half and it is attached to the receiver. And these two parts mate together 
to form, I don't know, the entire trigger group. So it's not a really straightforward affair to just drop in a trigger kit to a Marlin. Enter the DI Products trigger group. What it does is gives you a 6061 CNC milled trigger guard. That's the first upgrade you're going to get when you do it. Okay, you're going to pull your old trigger out. You're going to take all the parts out of it except for the trigger blade itself. You're going to take the safety, the spring, you'll pitch the pins because it's going to give you different trigger pivot pins which are threaded and you're going to transfer them all over to this trigger housing. So what's that do for you? One, I already said it, aesthetically it looks pretty smoking. Huge upgrade, especially if you're shooting competitively, using it as a Liberty rifle, whatever you're doing with your 795, people who know the gun will immediately recognize there's something different with a gun. Okay, second kind of cool is what we're talking. How about first type of cool? Ergonomically, is there a way it's going to improve the trigger? In my shooting test, the answer is yes. Because one, it's going to have an over-travel stop screw. You can't see it. It's in the top portion of the trigger, which you can adjust. And so it will kill all that mushy over-travel in the regular Marlin 795 trigger. It's not going to really decrease the pull of the trigger. Um, since you're just working with this bottom half, that's not really going to get done. But it's crisper. It's cleaner. And there's no over-travel. That's what I find about it. And the comfort's improved because now you have a 3 8 inch wide trigger face. Look at that. That's pretty sick. Love it. So in my shooting, the DI Products trigger guard is excellent. You know, again, it's not a modular trigger. We can't just throw in a trigger group like we can in, I don't know, a 1022 or whatever. This is the next best thing. We get rid of this, drop in a DI Products trigger guard, Voila, you're off to the races. And don't be frightened or whatever that it's going to be too hard to install. Um, there's excellent instructions on the DIProductsInc.com website and they will walk you through it. And all it entails again is you're just going to pull out these pieces from this trigger guard, put them in that with the new trigger face. Notice in these pictures here, they want you to lock tight those trigger, trigger pivot screws. Uh, I probably used a little more than I should, but, you know, I'm kind of thorough that way. I don't want them to back out on me. And then you just do a little adjusting according to the instructions. And, again, you're ready to rock and roll. Value. <sighs> kind of up there. Sorry. The price is a little bit up there. I think running around $70, at least now. This is early 2012 when I'm making the video on this. I've been testing the unit since June 2011, by the way. Thereabouts. Maybe July, I forget. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit expensive, but if you are, if you are, you know, a 795 guy, you love it, might be worth the money. While you're on their website, you might want to check out their other stuff, which I think also holds value depending on the model of gun you've got. They have one of these, I think, for a Model 60 Marlin. They have tactical charging handles, which are also CNC milled, made here in the United States of America, I believe, and that might account for some of the price. And then they have a 25 MOA Picatinny rail you can put on your Marlins as well if you're into long range with 22 long rifle, like popping rounds at 300 yards. Uh, in my mind, if you are a fan, worth the money, check it out. Highly recommend it here in the Nut and Fancy Project, and it is a sweet addition to a very established Hall of Famer here in TMP. See ya.